Would you believe it? It has been over three years since George Lucas sold his company to Disney. Over three years. And finally, we have a new Star Wars film out there. Finally. It's been, what, 2005? Ten years! Ten years since the last Star Wars film. I can't believe that. Ten freaking years. And now it's finally here. So, what did I think of it? It was great. It was really, really great. But not perfect in my eyes. So what I'm going to do, this is my review of Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's set, it's going to be split into four parts. Part one is what I loved about the film, non-spoilers, so I won't be spoiling anything as of yet in this video. So don't worry about going anywhere. I don't worry, I'll put up a spoiler tag to say when I'm going to actually talk about spoilers. Um, so what's great, non-spoilers. What I disliked, non-spoilers, I'm swearing at you now. Uh, what I disliked, non-spoilers. And then I will get into the spoiler stuff of what I really loved in the film. Really loved, because of course, you, I can't really say what I like, what I really love without spoiling it. So obviously, I'll, I will, again, I will put up a spoiler tag when I'm starting to talk about spoilers and you can just switch off after that. But if you've seen the film and you want to see what I thought, then carry on watching after that moment. And then of course I'm going to tell you what I really disliked. Spoilers about the film. And then some unanswered questions which I really, really need answering. Like really badly. So, I've actually got my notes here, so I may end up looking to the... Well, is it left? Yeah, left. I don't know I don't know if the camera flips itself round when I'm actually editing. Um, but I've never really done one of these before. I've never really done a camera review, so this will be interesting for me. So the very first one I'm ever actually doing, so I may be a bit bad, so just bear with me. You know, just, just, just bear with me. So, let's get on with my review. <laughs> So I think many will definitely agree with me that seeing a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away and then the Star Wars crawl, brand new and fresh after so long, it's so cool. It's so cool to see that after so long. Yeah, sure, you could go and search any of the Star Wars movies and take a look at the crawl, but to see a fresh new crawl, see Episode 7 appear, The Force Awakens, it, oh, just got to love that feeling. You've really got to love that feeling, seriously. The character performances. So, we have some new main characters. There's Rey, who is from the planet of Jakku. You do get to know a bit about her backstory, which is quite nice, but not too much right now. Uh, but I will go into spoilers about that later. Uh, there's Finn, who is a stormtrooper. Again, none of this is really spoilers, because this is sort of stuff you're told off, off the bat. He's a stormtrooper with an interesting past and he wants to he wants to uh, uh, what's the word what's the word the word is the word is I, it will come to me the word will come to me he wants to <laughs> um, uh, I, I can't think I can't think of the word why can't I think of the word hmm well he no longer wants to be part of the first order yeah whatever that word is I can't remember that what that word is not betray. I mean, it's sort of betray, but uh, whatever. Um, so he he, he kind of wants to move away from the first order because he really is starting to. Well, I don't know why my eyes are watering. He's really starting to dislike what the first order are now doing because, of course, the whole film is set 30 years after Episode Six. So a lot has changed. A lot has changed. And a lot has happened, and I really hope that we get to find out some more backstory about what's happened in the last 30 years. Not make a film about it, but just. In future movies, I hope they tell us more about what has happened in that in those 30 years. So that'd be great to see. There's some really nice comedy. There's, just, just the, the comedy isn't forced. The comedy is spot on. They don't give you too much. They don't give you too little. It's spot on what they do with the comedy. You, you get a good few laughs throughout the film, and you get a nice few <gasps> moments. You get a nice few shocks. You get a nice few heartfelt moments. It's 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 so nice. It's really really nice. My favourite character, I would have definitely have to say, is Ray and BB-8. Uh, of the new characters, I should say. I'll get into uh, some of the older characters later on. Uh, Ray and BB-8 are my favourite characters. BB-8 is just so lovable. He's, there's some sort of human aspect to him, which is quite weird. That a droid could feel human. 
I think it's because of the way he's translated. He just he's just translated the way the things he says, which obviously you get told about what he says. The things he says just feels human. And I love that about him. You've got like a little droid who you can love and want to hug and he's just still human at the same time. It's it's a nice it's a nice thing to see. It really is. The film really gets right to the point as well. It, see, there, there's secrets, obviously, which you pretty much find out at a steady pace. They don't keep the secrets on to the very end. They don't keep it to the very end. They tell you at a nice pace throughout the film. Obviously, I won't re reveal what the secrets are just yet, but it, it's it's nice that the film is spread out evenly. They don't just give you a whole massive info dump, which nobody ever wants when they're watching a film. Nobody ever wants. There's a few nods here and there from to the original films. I didn't really notice any nods to the prequel trilogy, which I guess isn't a bad thing. Maybe I'm just dumb and I didn't pick up on any nods to the prequel trilogy, but there was a few nods to the original trilogy, which is quite nice. Uh, not too many, but not too much. You know, again, it's that they're they're doing things at steady pace. They're not giving you too much, too fast. One thing that I really did like as well is that the trailer, well, well all the trailers, they didn't give you much, which was quite surprising. You would watch the trailer, and you'd be surprised about how much you still didn't really pick up on when you were watching the film. You were thinking, oh, well, that's completely different from what I was imagining it. Which I love when trailers do that because a lot of trailers these days just tell you the whole story from beginning to end. And even when somebody put all the clips from Star Wars The Force Awakens in what they believe was chronological order, it still didn't reveal everything, which is really nice. I really love it when a trailer just doesn't tell you the whole story, and you can actually just properly enjoy a movie. So that was really, really great. Now, all the characters. There was obviously Han Solo, Chewbacca, Leia, and then of course there was a few smaller roles as well, and of course there was Luke Skywalker. Um, but I'm not going to talk about Luke Skywalker until I get to the spoiler bit, but I'll talk about the other three. Leia, I was quite surprised about Leia's performance because of course you hear the way, what's her name, Carrie Fisher, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot her name then, you hear the way Carrie Fisher speaks these days, and the way she speaks in reality, it's a very croaky voice. And she really did try her best to tone it down. The way she sort of speaks in real life, it, it can't, it's not, obviously she can't help it. She can't really help it much. But it's, it's very throaty, the way she speaks in real life. And the way, where, the way she was speaking in the movie, I was quite surprised. She really brought her voice down to make it sound neat and tidy. So that was really good. And I... I was, uh, the, the way she was portrayed as well in the film was quite nice. Yeah, I, I'll admit she was quite nice in the film. They didn't give us too much of her. They didn't give us too little. They gave us a, just the amount, just the right amount of Leia. Chewbacca. Oh well, who doesn't love Chewbacca? Just, just, just the way he just says some really comical lines. Obviously, you can't understand what he's saying because Han will translate it for you. And uh, going on to Han, well, a fair performance. Um, but I'll, again, I'll go. I'll go more into him into spoilers because I do have a few. Well, actually, um, well, will I go into spoilers? Yeah, I will go into him in a f in, in spoilers later on. Poe Dameron, another new character. Um, we didn't really get to know much about him, but that's good because it's it's good that they don't tell us everything about every character right away. You know, you know just about enough about him for now. For now, you know a right, the right amount of information. Obviously, there's no doubt he's going to have a difficult past, just as much as everyone else, but it's just good to know that you don't know everything right away. And that's pretty much it about what I liked, non-spoiler-wise. So let's go into what I didn't like, non-spoiler-wise. A few characters kind of felt underused. For example, Captain Phasma. She she was in it. She was in it, but you kind of don't really know why. She's just this sort of leader who is just a leader. She's there and she could do stuff, but they don't really use her much. 
So, I don't really know what to say about her, really. I'm intrigued to know more about her, but we just don't really know why she was there. Just She was just there. Um, and although I really did like seeing Chewbacca and Leia, and we saw them for the right amount, they didn't really get to do much, to be honest. They again, they were just sort of there. I felt they were more there for for the fans, really. Hey, it's Leia and Chewbacca, hooray! Which, you know, I wish they did a bit more rather than just standing around. If anything, well, Leia was the one who stood who stood around a bit more. Chewbacca was was there in the action, but he was the background action, which I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I'm. Disappointed on the fact, I'm not going to tell you the ending, obviously, don't worry about that, but I'm disappointed on the fact that it builds up to an ending we're not going to find out the conclusion to for a year and a half. That kind of annoys me. That really annoys me that they do that. Um, because, don't get me wrong, it builds up anticipation, yes, but it's a year and a half away. As a standalone film, it doesn't work. This is definitely a film that sets up a trilogy. It does not work as a standalone film, for sure. So if you were to watch this film and then all of a sudden never want to watch the next two films or you just can't watch the next two films, well, you're not going to get that conclusion, are you? Because, well, it sets up a story that you're going to have to watch the next two films to find out about. Uh, what else didn't I like? What else didn't I like? I'm going to look at my list here. Um... We were mis we were we were misled in a few areas. I can't really say what until I get to spoilers. But there was a few mo when obviously going back to the trailer, the trailer didn't tell us much. But there are things which the trailer tried to tease up to that never really happened. So it kind of misled me a little bit. And the, some of the things which the actors and the uh, J.J. Abrams would say would they they built up something that kind of really didn't happen and probably won't happen until future movies so again I don't really know how I feel about that um, some some characters kind of didn't get, really give it their all um, don't get me wrong I like Han Solo I really like Han Solo, but I kind of felt like Harrison Ford didn't try for the movie. I get the feeling he's tired and he's old, and he just didn't really want to give it his all, to be honest. Um, I just don't really know what to say about him. He was he was good, he was good, but he didn't really want to try and get in on the action much. I kind of felt like they really were trying to show you Finn and Ray and Poe and Kylo Ren. So, I don't really know how I feel about Harrison Ford's support, uh, uh, performance with Han Solo. And obviously with him and Chewbacca, they're together, but they weren't that together. In, pre in the prequel series, uh, not prequel series, the, 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 the original, sorry. You, their relationship was tied. They were, they were like that. They were like that. In this, in this movie, they were just sort of... <laughs> in my personal opinion. Kylo Ren. Uh, he was a good baddie. But not on the level of Darth Vader. Yet. Just yet. I, I, I liked him. But not that much. But I am hoping I will grow to like him. Maybe if I when I watch the film again. Because I'm going to go watch the film again uh, later on next week actually uh, so hopefully maybe if I watch it a second time I'll appreciate his character a little bit more now JJ did a very good job on blending practical effects and CGI there wasn't too much CGI which is good there was more practical effects than CGI uh, I will say that some of the CGI you could tell was that you could tell it was CGI but that's not necessarily a bad thing because well you're trying to make a character look good and sometimes it just falls flat just a little bit. Let's talk about General Hux and Snoke for a minute. Snoke, you could definitely see where his character was going. Um, you didn't see him much, but you definitely could see that he was going to play a big role at some point. And Hux, I 
don't really know how to feel about him. Uh, I get the feeling there's potential, but we didn't see too much of him to know him that well right now. But hopefully we'll get to see more of him in the future. So personally for me, I'm going to give you a score right now. I would give it an 8 out of 10. Wasn't perfect by any means, but it wasn't terrible. It was it was good. It was really great. I liked it. I really did like it, and I definitely want to go see it again. And every time I'll see it, I'll watch it on Blu-ray when it comes out. I'll enjoy it every time. It's not going to be like the prequels where I'll just be like, oh god, what is this? There's n there wasn't a moment I ever did that in the film, which was really good. So I'm glad that I've got a new Star Wars film that I can enjoy. I can really enjoy. So now we're going to get into spoilers of what I really liked and what I really didn't like about Star Wars The Force Awakens. So spoiler warning right now if you have not watched the film, go away, watch the film and then come back and then you'll see what I personally thought about these big moments in the film. So you gone? Yeah? You gone? Okay, right. So what I really liked about The Force Awakens what the star killer base which is the which is what the new death star was what the star killer base could do that was so jaw dropping the fact that obviously cuz the original death star could destroy a planet could destroy one planet the star killer base can destroy multiple planets at the same time literally annihilate those planets which just <laughs> was quite amazing to look at it was it was just wow that was so cool and uh, I hope we get to see more stuff like that in future movies so shall I tell you what my favorite scene of the whole movie was when Finn's passed out and Rey is waking up from being passed out and Kylo Ren is there trying to use the force to pick up Anakin's lightsaber and then just as it's about to reach his hand it flies right past him and lands into Rey's hand that that is just that was a Oh, that moment it's <sighs> words can't really describe it that that put the m biggest massive smile on my face <sighs> I smiled so hard <laughs> oh that was just amazing I would I would I would definitely watch the movie and anticipate that moment again because that just that felt so great it's like it was really meant to be she was meant to be she was meant to be a Jedi. She really was meant to be a Jedi. So that was that just really. She was she Ray in in general was just a really great character to watch. She was just amazing. The lightsaber fights between her and Kylo Ren, that was spot on, absolutely spot on. Don't get me wrong, Finn was great with a lightsaber, but he's not Jedi material. I don't think. I think he was just. I get the feeling he probably has the Force, but not as strong as. Ray does. And now I can see why the film is called The Force Awakens because I, I get the feeling a lot of people will say why was it called The Force Awakens? Did The Force really wake up? Well yes, it did. It awoken in Ray. She didn't really... If she, if she knew she had The Force, she probably would have noticed it a long time ago. But she only really noticed it when she was being held captured by Kylo Ren. When she was there. Oh, that moment with the Stormtrooper. That was hilarious. <laughs> She's just there trying to use the Jedi mind trick. Because she, oh, she must be aware of, of the of Jedi and what they were able to do. They were able to do... Uh, these are not the droids you're looking for and so forth. Uh, and she was just there, all tied up, just being all like... You will unlock these shackles and leave the door open and the Stormtrooper was like that what are you saying what I will tighten those shackles and it's tried once more and it's just it's just so hilarious to know it actually worked and it's just oh that that was that was amazing that was just an amazing scene as well to watch it was a hilarious scene to watch just the, the comedy the comedy is spot on the comedy is really spot on I will give it that uh, what else did I like? Let me see what else I liked. I guess I should have realised that Kylo Ren was Han Solo's son. I kind of didn't really anticipate it much. I mean, it's almost like they were trying to hint it right in your face, but I kind of just didn't really pick up on it until it was revealed, like, halfway through the film. Again, I like that, the, like that they didn't leave that until the very end to tell you. They literally told you right off the bat, halfway through the film. Oh, your father, Han Solo, blah, 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 blah. So that was quite nice. I, I, I don't, I, I hate it when they leave a secret to the very, very end. Obviously, with the exception of, um, I am your father, Luke, and so forth. Um, but 
I think if they had done that again here and revealed that Han Solo was Kylo Ren's father and Leia was uh, his mother at the very end, I probably would have felt a little bit cheated. The fact that they're doing exactly what they did with Episode 5. Um, don't get me wrong, it's okay to use the same ideas from your previous films, but... You know, don't make an exact carbon copy, which I will get to that at the very end of this video on kind of... I'm sort of messing around with Lego here. <laughs> I got Millennium Falcon, I want to build that now because I'm so anticipated. Uh, be, you know, don't always try and make everything like your previous films. Don't... Don't overuse the magic, if you know what I mean. So let's get to things which I didn't like, spoiler-wise. There was a few things. Quite a few things. The uh, Starkiller base was a bit of a throwaway. A bit, yeah. You had like, in the, orig in the originals, you had the Death Star, it was like this almighty powerful base that could destroy a planet. And to see what the Starkiller base could do, that was amazing. And then to know that all it took was Captain Phasma to press a few buttons and then the X-Wings to go to the Starkiller base and just destroy these things and all of a sudden bang the whole the whole planet base goes I kinda felt a little bit cheated there, there was so much potential with the Starkiller base and nothing kind of happened after that it was like oh we got this massive weapon that we could use oh it's gone so that I kind of felt a little bit cheated there, that the the, the, the I, can't, I can't really say it. It, it it annoys me the fact that the Star Killer base is five times bigger than a Death Star, five times bigger, and yet it was destroyed a lot easier than a Death Star was. What? Seriously? What? what why? Why? Surely there would have been a, an epic battle to destroy it, but no, that, that wasn't the case. That really wasn't the case. R2. R2-D2. So underused. Really underused. Well, you saw him underneath the blanket and it's all like, oh, he's been on low power since Luke disappeared. And then I kind of didn't like it when, at the very end, all of a sudden he's active. He was inactive, and that was why did he be, why did he activate himself? Why? It's like it's almost like the cliches where he was called upon the plot to activate himself. It's like Cinema Sins. I know for a fact Cinema Sins is going to pick up on that when they do a Cinema Sins of the Force Awakens, where oh R two D two is awake when the plot calls for it, because that is true. Why why did he wake up? Like why why was he inactive? And then there was there was nothing to make to have made him wake up. He just woke up all of a sudden. I, I don't understand. I mean, you could probably argue that he woke up once he knew that the, the immediate threat was gone. But the whole idea is that they were trying to look for for Luke Skywalker, so that not you know you, you'd he could have woken up earlier and it probably still would have had the same result. They probably wouldn't have even realised that R2 was still out there and had the missing parts to where Luke Skywalker was hidden. So it wouldn't have made a difference either way. So I don't understand why he just suddenly woke up. Somebody will probably explain that to me. But that's just me, personally. Now, this is the thing I really, really didn't like. And I get the feeling a lot of people will just will, will forgive it for some reason. I won't forgive this. I really won't forgive this. Luke Skywalker. What the hell was that? He was in it for three minutes. No. One and a half minutes. He was in the film for one and a half minutes. Seriously? Like, seriously? I mean... It's annoyed me because you had people like J.J. Abrams and a few of the cast members well even 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 Mark Hamill and they were trying to make a big secret over Luke Skywalker 
you know, has he turned to the dark side, or has he done this, has he done that? They were trying to make a massive secret about him. Well, maybe there is a secret, but you're not going to find out about it until the next film. They built up to him for you only to see him for a minute. A minute, well, a minute and a half. You saw him for like five seconds in that small flashback, and that small vision that Ray had, and then for like a minute and a half when Ray finds Luke Skywalker on whatever planet it was. I don't know what planet it was. But he didn't even speak. He didn't even say anything. He just stood there with Ray handing him Anakin's lightsaber, and that was it. They they made they made it out like he was this big part of the film when he wasn't. He was nothing. He was absolutely nothing. He was just this That that annoyed me. That's really annoyed me. I was looking forward to seeing a Luke Skywalker performance, and now I've got to wait until episode eight to actually see that. And that's really that's quite that's 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 angered me. That's really angered me. And no doubt, a lot of people will forgive it. They'll be like, oh, the film was amazing. Yeah, sure, Luke Skywalker didn't... Really... But the film was amazing. People will be like that. I'm not like that. I do not do that. I will pick... If I don't like something, I will pick up on it, and I will crap on it. I will really crap on it. And that was the biggest thing I really didn't like. That they built up to Luke Skywalker, the producers and the actors built up to Luke Skywalker, and nothing happened. Nothing happened with him. Absolutely nothing. So that just drove me a little bit mad. I say a little bit, here I am, furious. Seriously furious about it. So, wah. was there anything else I didn't like? So going back to Harrison Ford with Han Solo. Now, although his death was spoiled to me about three hours before I saw the movie, so you idiot that spoiled it to me, I hate you forever and just off forever I could sense it I've, 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 before it was spoiled to me I think I could probably have sensed it that he was going to die anyway because the way Harrison Ford was doing promotions and when he was doing interviews he really sounded like he didn't care much anymore about playing the role and going back to what I was saying earlier that he didn't really give it his all well probably because I get I could sense that he was he was going to die he wanted he was going to die anyway I could see it I could see it. I really could see it, and I just saw that he wasn't. He didn't really want to do the films anymore, and he thought, "Well, this is a perfect opportunity to kill myself." <sighs> so that kind of annoyed me a little bit. That I know this is your last appearance, but at least literally give it your best performance you've ever given, you've ever given in your entire life for your last performance as that character. Unless, of course, you're going to come back as a force apparition, but I highly doubt that. So, that's my two cents on that, to be honest. I, I, I could feel it. Obviously, it got spoiled to me, but I could feel it. Although, his, his death was still shocking. His death was still shocking, even though I knew it was going to happen, but it still kind of got to me here. It got to me here. So, I got a few unanswered questions, which I need answering. So, the first question is, why was Rey abandoned on Jakku? Because Rey she didn't really have any parents. She was just a bad on Jakku for some reason. We didn't really find out why. To be honest, all of a sudden her parents just, well, well I assume her parents just left on that ship. And Rey never saw them again. I was half expecting when Rey arrived to Luke Skywalker, I was half expecting to be all like, with the lightsaber, hello father. But that didn't really happen. I mean, there's a possible chance that there's a reason why Luke Skywalker hid himself away. It could be because maybe Luke Skywalker is Rey's father. And <sighs> Hmm. That's just got that's got my mind thinking. It's really got my mind thinking. It could, she could be his daughter. And maybe he abandoned her because it was her destiny? I don't know. I don't know, but I, I, I hope we find that out in the next film. I really hope we do. Another thing that I want answered is, why is Finn only just now abandoning the First Order when he probably could have done it a long time ago? Unless maybe Poe was his key to getting out, but surely he still probably could have got out a long time ago somewhere, somehow. So, and I get the feeling we don't, 
know everything there is to know about Finn just yet for the way Kylo Ren sort of looked at Finn. Yeah, he could probably sense his uh his willing that willingness to defect. That's the word I was looking for. Defect. That's the word. Uh he probably senses his sense his defection. But I get the feeling there's more to Finn than what we're realizing. I mean he was able to use a lightsaber for crying out loud. Well, not brilliantly, but he was able to use it well enough. So surely there's something more about him that we're yet to find out. But I get the feeling we'll probably find out in the next two films. We'll find out at some point. Now what happened to Kylo Ren? What made him the man he actually is in the film? He's quite sadistic, he's quite twisted, he's obsessive over Darth Vader and his past. Well, because Darth Vader is, of course, his grandfather. So, yeah. Hmm. That's that's the thing. And of course, uh, well, why why is he so hell bent on taking over the shoes of Vader? You know. And what the hell? Where the hell? Sorry. Were the Knights of Ren in this movie? Again, we were being misled. We were being misled. We were being told we will find out about the Knights. We were, told, we were being told about his past. Oh, he's part of the Order of the Knights of Ren, and we saw the Knights of Ren in that in that vision that Ray had. But that's all we saw. That's all we saw. We were being misled to be told. We were being told that we were we were going to find out about Knights of Ren. We didn't. We knew nothing. Absolutely nothing. They. You might as well have just completely ignored that small brief glimpse you saw of them in that vision. Because there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. It teased it, clearly. It was obviously teasing it for a future movie, but for now, nothing. So, it annoyed me that we were misled there. So, that's, only, that's, the, that's the big four questions I just want answered. Well, now really, but we won't find out until the next two or so movies. So, I'll finish off with what somebody in front of me when I was leaving the cinema said to his friend that I overheard. It was pretty much a retelling of A New Hope. So you've got a droid with crucial information that needs to get back to the Resistance. Uh, they introduced main characters who find the droid and go on this massive adventure with it. Uh, one of the main characters, the older main characters, is killed off near the end of the movie. Uh, the main characters destroy the planet destroyer due to a flaw in its design and it featured a journey to find this mysterious Jedi so yeah it pretty much was just a retelling of A New Hope and everybody else seems to have overlooked that apart from me and this other person it seems I mean I don't know if you guys agree but it pretty much was just that it's still a great film I really liked it not the best film of the year but I really liked it Again, still a solid eight out of ten, but there was just a, there was just flaws that I feel like people just won't pick up on because they're just too afraid of hating on something because they're afraid of the criticism. I'm not afraid to be shouted at. You guys can completely disagree with what I want to say. You go ahead, and I'll just fight back because I'm not one that hides my criticisms. If I don't like something, I don't like something. I will say it. So. You know, there we go. But no doubt everybody will completely ignore the film's criticisms because it's Star Wars. And it's uh, a good film. And they've been waiting for so long, so... I think in time, they'll start. To, people will start to see the flaws of it. Um, but, let's, obviously, let's just try not to look at the flaw, flaws too much. But I could see the flaws. So, you know, but... It's still a great film to watch. It's still a really great film for any Star Wars film to watch. Again, it's not a standalone movie. It starts off... It, you, you probably don't need to be a Star Wars fan to get it, put it that way, but it's definitely the start of a trilogy, and it definitely leaves it on a cliffhanger. So, that was my terrible review of Star Wars The Force Awakens. In theatres now. Go watch it. It's a good film. Really good film. And a farewell to you.